pixiehill.com and today I'm sharing the process I used to create this project which I love so much I've shoved it in a frame um, everything looks better in a frame by the way anyway this project is um, a sort of homage to summer and bees and honey and warm days I created this triptych for ginasdesigns.net and Gina has some really really amazing laser cut chipboard elements for crafting. I've used Gina's triptych arch top piece as the base here and it's made with really heavy chipboard which is quite sturdy and is able to withstand quite a bit of distressing. This has multiple washes of paint on it and it it's held up like a champ. Um, I've also used Gina's honeycomb in here and one of my very very favorite pro uh, products these faux metal numbers at the bottom. And because I know you don't want to see me endlessly umming and erring and mumbling. I've edited the process for creating this piece down to 20 minutes. Um, because I've edited so much out, if you have any questions, if I've missed something important, please, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, keep this in mind also, if you are going to create your own version of this piece, that it will probably take you much, much longer than 20 minutes. Don't worry about that. Just enjoy yourself and have fun. The first thing that you're going to want to do is just inspect your pieces to ensure that all of these little holes, all of these laser cut parts have been pushed out. I kind of work a little bit backwards sometimes in that I want to prepare the back of my pieces. Um, it's just a little bit easier than, than uh, doing it once, the, once everything else is complete. Um, if we start off preparing, prepping the back, we don't have to worry about that later on. And in this case, all I'm doing is applying a coat of black acrylic paint. One thing you will want to sort of keep in mind is that these pieces have sort of these little feet at either side. So you want to make sure that you do one facing in each direction and not this because then you're going to have two pieces, like having two left feet, and we don't want that. So just make sure that you have one foot facing one way, one facing the other way, and one right in the center. I'm going to start these archways off by giving them a coat of white paint. I'm not too worried about getting the, the insides or the sides or the back. I'm mostly concerned here about just getting a good base for my paint effect that I'm going to apply afterwards. I'm going to start layering color onto these top frame parts. And what I've done is selected um, sort of a bunch of different yellows and um, a really, really watered down um, dark brown, blackish color, a brown. I have um, some gold and some copper as well. What I'm going to do is really just start layering colors. Now I have my pieces here laid out in the order that they will be um, that they will be affixed together so that if I splash something on this um, it just helps to make everything cohesive. So I'm just 
really splashing stuff on at this point. Um, I am adding a lot of water and this will help to um, extend the drying time. I'm then going on top and just sort of pouncing and removing some of that paint. You can always, always add more paint if you want more color. It is far more difficult to remove um, a mistake or an error or something that you don't like than it is to add a little bit extra. Um, that's not to say it's impossible because it's, I certainly have made lots of mistakes that I've had to fix, um, but it just makes it a bit, bit easier. I'm okay with this. I will probably do some more, I will definitely be doing more distressing. Um, what I think I'm going to do now though is start adding um, tiny bits of this gold ink. This is um, a speedball pigment. But any sort of um, iridescent or metallic paint will do. And you can see that by just applying a really light wash, it sort of tones down and evens out that distressing. When I cut this piece out, I'm actually going to come in about an eighth of an inch, maybe even a tiny bit, a smidge, smidgen more. Um, because we have a sort of frame that goes on top, we have a little bit of um, we have a little bit of playroom here, so we don't need to cut it right along the edge. And again, this will sort of make um, make it so that we don't have to worry about these little bumpy ridge details. After I cut that out, I'm just going to set it right on top to make sure that it's going to fit all right. Yeah, and that's pretty good. So I'm going to apply a healthy layer of Mod Podge to the back. Then working quite quickly, I'm going to apply that my sheet to the front. and then apply another layer on top. If I do this fast enough, um, I shouldn't get too many wrinkles. I didn't quite cut enough off of this particular piece and I have a little bit of overhang there from my backdrop and I wanna get rid of that. One really easy thing to do is just get a nail file like this, an emery board, and rub that right along the edge and you'll see it totally gets rid of that, of the excess, and you end up with a perfect edge. I sand a lot of edges because I am absolutely horrific at, <laughs> at measuring. Um, so my next step is to, to give some age to, to these back pieces. I'm going to do basically the same thing that I did to the frame part. I'm just giving this a wash of water and giving it a wash of water not only extends the working time of your paint but it helps things to blend better. What I'm going to do is just, I'm concentrating on the edges here. Now this might seem quite yellow right now, um, which I don't mind, but um, I'm just gonna blend that totally in. If I work on all these pieces at the same time, it helps to give um, a really cohesive 
look. Sometimes what happens is we think, um, oh, well, I'll do one piece and then I'll move on and I'll do the next piece. And what sometimes ends up happening is that they don't, the pieces don't look like they belong to one another. Um, so doing it this way just helps things to look um, even. Cohesive is the word. Now I actually want my um, edges to be quite dark. So I'll be doing a number of layers on this. And you'll notice that as I'm working, I'm picking up some of the paint from the layers, uh, from the previous layers, and that's okay. I'll just, if I want to add more yellow, I'll just go back and add some more. The, what you will find if you're going to seal yours with Mod Podge as I did is that it sort of creates um, this barrier that is easy for the paint to wipe off. If this was, if there was no coating on, on these, if this was just the, the plain paper, um, it would be much harder to wipe off those previous layers because the pigments and the paint would saturate into the into the paper. The Mod Podge gives a little bit of a of a barrier, um, preventing it from from soaking in. And you notice I'm tamping and smudging and wiping all those different things. And I'm starting to get the effect that I'm looking for. It's just going to be a matter of continuing these layers. For this halo effect, I'm going to take just a little bit of white paint. And I want a damp brush but not soaking wet. And I'm just going to take a tiny bit on this flat brush and I'm going to sort of trace the outside edge of the brush where my line is. This is going to give a nice sort of highlighted area for their faces. use any sort of metallic or metallic or iridescent paint or whatever and I'm gonna go right around the edge wipe my brush off a little bit and then sort of blend it in and I get a nice halo effect. I'm going to add a little bit of copper to these halos um, just to add a little bit more contrast to the edge. Um, I do want to work pretty quickly here because I this is just printed on quite thin bond paper and I do not want it to to buckle or wrinkle so I'm going to work quite fast applying the a thin layer approximately where my image is going to go and then getting her down there pretty quickly my girls have now dried and I am placing a bit of tacky glue onto the back of the top frames and I am just applying it on top 
of my base. I'm just lining up all the bumps in, at the top here and the sides. The nice thing about tacky glue is that it sets fairly quickly. Um, if you have a little bit peeking out from your edges, just take a damp, a damp paintbrush and run it along the edge there. So again with my trusty tacky glue, Once again, just cleaning up those edges. I'm going to use these metallic brads in these holes just to give it a finished look. And to help them lie flat, I'm just going to give it a good squeeze with these pincers. And then these, the little metal bit that's hanging off the end, I'm just chopping it right off. I'm going to glue that directly to the bottom, right in the middle, and let that dry. And what I'm doing is really concentrating on these corners, because this is where grime would catch and sit. What I would like to do now is add uh, I'm going to add some diamond glaze, but I'm going to squirt a bit into this, just this egg cup, and add a bit of yellow paint because I want this to look a bit like honey. Um, maybe not exactly like honey, but honey-ish. And honey's actually... Honey comes in all sorts of different shades. Um, it can be quite amber colored. So this is sort of like, a bit like egg yolk. And that's okay, because I think it'll dry, I think it'll dry nicely. It's going to have some translucence to it because it is quite, um, the paint I added was, I only added a very tiny bit. So I'm adding this into the honeycombs here. I'm gluing these pieces together. And then I will be adding more decorative elements. These really cute beads these, um, are from Alpha Stamps. And I love the yellowy green sort of color of the, of the stone in them. I also have this fantastic huge bee which I'm going to place right at the top. Full of small bees too, which I'm going to place here and there. I 
I've decided I'm going to add a couple of butterflies to finish this off. Um, I have painted the edges just to sort of match everything up. I've distressed the number plates at the bottom so that it matches more the overall feel of um, being aged and old and dusty. And now I'm going to add my wee butterflies. So there's the piece. All that's left is for it to dry and me to pop it in a frame. 